قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار صدق الله العظيم Yesterday we spoke about an ideal masjid a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which has the ability to produce such a production that that production becomes the means of spreading good into the humanity. And we said that the masjid of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mainly built on four things. And the a'mal, the actions that used to take place in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were the same as what it was the mission of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ To elaborate and explain the Book of Allah, to purify people, individuals, and to teach them the Book and the rulings of the book and hikmah which is wisdom and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah says, when you have a masjid fi buyutin adhin Allahu an turfa' if a house of Allah is built on this criteria, then the production and the individuals that produce from that factory, because masjid is a factory, anybody that comes into this factory, he becomes equipped. He becomes one of those individuals who have been equipped with whatever it has to offer. So now, whoever comes into this society, he comes into this environment. Allah says, when the masajid as are, are according to what Allah wants them to be, and when the masajid are according to the rules and regulations, and the criteria that Allah has fixed, then the production and the individuals that will develop from that masjid will be such Rijal Not only men, but Rijal refers to men, but over here when we use the word, when Quran uses the word Rijal, it encompasses both the gender. And the reason why the word Rijal is used and not humans or believers or anything else, because we mentioned that earlier that for the brothers, for the men, their salah and their actions are complete when they are performed in the masjid. When your salah is performed in the masjid, it gives you the full reward. And when it's not performed, then you, have, you don't have the full reward. The reward is there, but it's not in, 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 in all in, in t- entirety, in its own completion. But for the sisters, Allah has given them that because of their nature and their occupancy around their house and other things that they are involved with, Allah has given them that leeway that for them, even if they were to pray in their house due to whatever reasons, they will get the same reward as they are praying in the masjid. And they will have that full reward. And that's the greatness that Allah has given to this gender. And this is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyhow, now Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that the production that brings out people from the masjid are such individuals. لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله That their businesses and their occupation of outside the masjid does not take them away from the masjid and from the actions of the masjid. 
Now who are these people that Allah is talking about? The first production, the first individual to develop from this environment is Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He is the first man that was produced from those a'mal that were taking place in the masjid. And from the mission of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's that man that was produced by the effort that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made amongst humanity. And then the people who were in the first row, the Ashra ya Mubashara, Umar, Uthman, Zubair, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas, these are the people that were the production of Masajid. Their likes, their loved, everything what they had was completely changed and it was made according to what Allah wanted them to be. Until Allah announced for them, radiallahu anhum wa radu'an. Not one place, many places in the Quran. Many places in the Quran, Allah announces. Who are these people? These are the people from whom Allah is happy. Allah is happy with them. And Allah Azza wa Jal, and they are also happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, for me to be happy with you, for me to be happy with you, or anyone else, I can show something from top and I can be someone else inside. And you won't know what I am inside because only Allah Azza wa Jal knows what is in the heart. When Allah announces about someone that Allah is happy with them, then indeed this person, he is pure from outside and he is pure from inside. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu mentions about this production, about these people who were generated from this environment. He mentions three things about them. أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ مُحَمَّدٍ أَبَرَّهُمْ قُلُوبًا وَأَعْمَقُهُمْ عِلْمًا وَأَقَلُّهُمْ تَكَلُّفًا The first thing he mentions about them is أَبَرَّهُمْ قُلُوبًا Their hearts are clean. So to become the protection of the masjid, to become one of those people who Allah speaks about, رِجَال The men. And these are those people who have been produced from the masjid and the effort that takes place in the masjid. Their hearts have to be clean. Their hearts have to be clean. Otherwise, nothing can go inside. All that we learn and everything that we hear, if our hearts are not clean with individuals, with people, our dealings are not clean with individuals and people, then indeed nothing is going to work. It's just going to be a bounce off, bounce off, bounce off. And this is where tazkiyah to nafs comes in. Purification. Tarbiyah. What does tarbiyah mean? Tarbiyah means that you have been into that environment where your correction has been done. Rabba yurabbi tarbiyatan. Murabbi is the person, Murabbi is the person who takes care of you fully. This is why a mother is called a Murabbi, the one who takes care of you. Allah Azza wa Jal is a Murabbi. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah Azza wa Jal did my tarbiyah. Allah did the tarbiyah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did the tarbiyah of Sahaba radwanullahi alayhi wa jama'in. With what? Number one is the accompanying good people. Having the majlis of salihin was sulaha. Having the company of good people makes you good. And not only those who are good from outside, but those who are good from inside. Because you stay in their company and you adapt their qualities. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he spent the most amount of time amongst the men with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Someone came to Umar and they said, that who is better, you or Abu Bakr? 
So Umar, and this is after the demise of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Umar radiallahu anhu said, لَلَيْلَةُ أَبِي بَكْرٍ أَوْ يَوْمُ أَبِي بَكْرٍ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ عُمَرْ وَآلِ عُمَرْ That one night and one day of Abu Bakr which he has spent with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I can give away all my good deeds. And I can give away all the good deeds of my family members just to receive the greatness and the effects what Abu Bakr has earned in one night being with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So someone asked Umar, what is that night? He said, Dhaka Laylatul Hijrah. This is the night of migration. And what is the night of migration? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is going on the camel. And sometime Abu Bakr is right behind him. Sometime he goes on the right, sometime he goes on the left, and sometime he goes in the front. And when the Prophet ﷺ seen Abu Bakr doing this tawaf on the journey, he asked Abu Bakr, Oh Abu Bakr, what's your, why can't you just go with me? Why do you keep on going back and forth, right and left? He said, Oh Prophet of Allah, when I get this fear that the enemies will attack you from the right, so I come on the right. When I have this fear that the enemies will attack you from the left, I come on the left. When I have the fear that the enemy will come from behind, I go at the back. And when I have the fear they will come from the front, I will go in the front. So the first arrow, if it's attacked from the enemy, it hits me before it hits you. This, is what, this was not just love for the Prophet, it was love for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was love for that individual who Allah has sent with the message. That everything of Abu Bakr can be sacrificed. A deen can be compromised? No. This is the production I'm talking about that produces, the masjid produces. And this was the statement of Abu Bakr at the time of the demise of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. أَيَنْقُصُ الدِّينُ وَأَنَا حَيْهِ how can this be possible that the deen of Allah can decrease while Abu Bakr is alive? It's not going to happen. I will give my life for the sake of Allah. And this is what we have learned from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these were the teachings of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now you would say Abu Bakr is, you know, a high caliber individual. No one can be Abu Bakr. Of course, no one can be Abu Bakr. Because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, every individual will be called from a designated door amongst the eight doors of Jannah. There are eight doors of Jannah. And every individual will be called amongst one of those doors that come and enter through me. Either salah, fasting, charity, these are the different doors of Jannah. So whatever the amount of action, great number of action, with sincerity you did, that's the door is going to call you on the day of judgment. But then he said, Abu Bakr asked the Prophet of Allah, is there anyone that will be given the honor to be called from all the eight doors of Jannah? The Prophet Sallallahu said, yes, there is an individual in my ummah. So he said, who is that? And this is amongst the Sahaba, Sahaba are sitting. He said, on, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَنَزَلَ جِبْرَائِيلُ أَخْبِرِنِي Jibra'il has descended and he told me that on the day of judgment, Abu Bakr, you will be called from all the eight doors of Jannah. Every door will be wishing that Abu Bakr can enter through me. Every door will be wishing that how can Abu Bakr come through me. Now of course, this is Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. But the prediction of the Prophet ﷺ was such, you know, in every class there are flop people. Right? In every market of production, there are some products that becomes flop. So for covering it up, they bring other gadgets just to cover up their faults. It's not that from the beginning to the end, every product that has been produced or that has been come out from this factory, 
From product number A to product number Z, every single one was a complete and awesome product. No, there are flaws. Steve Jobs died and after that, there is no f new, new uh, design for the phone, iPhone. Right? Everything just, you know, just make it a little bigger, make it a little thinner, take it out, take it out, take it out, eat the money of people. So, every company that produces stuff, they have some downs, they have some downfalls. But one production, that was the production of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Masjid Al-Nabawi, was that from Abu Bakr to the last Sahabi, every individual was a phenomenal person. To the extent that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself said, my sahaba, my companions are like the guiding stars. Any one of them you will follow, it will take you towards the path which is guidance. Rib'i bin Amir radiallahu an. Rib'i bin Amir radiallahu an. This is way after the khilaf, towards the end of the khilafat of Umar radiallahu an. Rib'i bin Amir radiallahu anhu was sent to deliver the message to the Persian Empire, to the king of Persia. And when he arrived, the guard at the door would not let him enter. So he said, I need to go and talk to the king. He says, well, you can't go in. Why not? Because you have to come with an appointment. And not only that, you have to come with a big delegation. You're just one person. What type of message you are trying to give? He says, well, I have a message for him to be delivered from Amir al-Mu'mineen. And I'm going to go and deliver the message. If you let him know. So this person's not, no. You just go. He says, why don't you just convey my message? And then after that, if the king denies, then that's the fact. He says, no, go. He said, then, well, I'll have to take care of you with my sword. So this person, the gatekeeper, the bodyguard at the gate, not one, many, they look at his sword and they say, you're going to take out that sword which is half broken? He said, don't get fooled by the sword. It's not the sword, it's the hand behind the sword. Don't get fooled by the sword. It's not the sword, it's the hand behind the sword. When I take it out, then you will know how many I, I, I take down. So they said, this person is, you know, something very special. So let's bring him inside, we'll have a laugh with him. So they take him inside. And it was a custom that anybody that goes into the, uh, the, uh, the territory of the king, they will have to bow down. They will have to do sujood to him. Rabbi ibn Amr says, no, I'm not going to do sujood. Okay, the king said, what's your message? He said, Ibta'athana Allah linukhrij al-ibad min ibadati al-ibad ila ibadati rabbi al-ibad wa min jawri al-adiyan ila adli al-islam wa min dhayqi al-dunya ila sa'atiha. Who are we? We have been sent by Allah. What's our message? To take out people from the worship of the idols into the worship of one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the ingest of all the religions that have been corrupting people and giving statements of being ingest with individuals, we are going to bring them on the purity and the clean religion of Islam, which is equal to everyone. And will take you out from the tightness of this world into the vastness of this world. You will enjoy your life. So the king said, okay, but I don't see you enjoying it. I don't see you enjoying it. You barely have proper clothing to wear. Your, your sword is half broken. You can barely move. What's your enjoyment? He said, do you want to see my enjoyment? He said, yes. Rabbi ibn Amir says, Subhanallah walhamdulillahi wa la ilaha illallahu wallahu akbar. And as soon as he says, Allahu Akbar, the palace starting to shake. This riwayat is in Kanzul Ummal, the palace starting to shake. So everyone is shocked, what's going on? 
The second time he says, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And the palace is shaking again. So the king understands, this person, he might look something else from outside, but he's got power. You know, they say superpower. Superpower. This is the Sahaba. These are the people who possess that power. Who are these people? Rijalul la tulhihim tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikri. This is the prediction of the masjid. So when the masajid are producing or giving that type of a'mal, that type of deeds, that type of nourishment, then wallah, each prediction of this masjid is sufficient to give a great example of Islam in the society outside. Everyone that comes out as a produced individual from the masajid, from the environment, have the strength to bring people closer by their good actions, by their good behavior. 18 Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhi ajma'een, migrated from Medina to China for business, and that brought Islam into China. They didn't go for preaching, they went for business. They had their shops there. But their dealings were so impressed by people that people say, you are so clean people. We want to be like you. This is why, what was the greatest statements of Sahaba when they would give da'wah? You know, when we give da'wah to people, when we give da'wah to other religion, talk about Islam, we talk about this, talk about this. Many things we talk about. All the scholars, they agree that there was one statement which was collectively found in every companion of the Prophet ﷺ when they went to different areas to teach people about Islam or to introduce Islam to humanity. Only one statement, and that was, Kunu mithlana. You want to know Islam? Become like us. This is the only thing. You want to know Islam? There is no book to read. Don't go and read the translation of the Quran. Stay with us and we will teach you what Islam is. It's become like us. I myself cannot say that because I have many flaws in my life. Every individual is a judge to his own self. You don't need to point fingers at other people. Can you go to someone and tell him, Kunu Mithli, become like me? Ask this question to yourself. Can you go and someone asks you, brother, can you tell me about the religion of Islam? And you give him answer, kun mithli, become like me. Do you have that courage inside? If not, then we need to build on it. We need to work for it. This is what Islam is. To build yourself. To make amongst those that you become the ideal individual, what Allah wants you to become. And this is the production of fi buyutin adhin Allah, Allah speaks about. May Allah make us among those, make us among those individuals who are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khair.